Hello there, it's me, Rama, and I'm actually demoing some new features for my Rama Save plugin. And first up on the list, I want to demo the feature involving this pyramid. Now, you see it's alternated between two different states, the, the red state and then the not fully red state. So I'm going to time a save when I know it's red. Ready? One, two, go! Alright, I've now saved and it's gonna break and here's what's gonna happen so I'm gonna hit uh, page down now notice it stopped working it's no longer alternating states this is one of my lovely updates see I get an error and the reason this error is occurring is because see look it's saying oh I'm trying to find this thing that's in the uber graph of the thing of the thing what that translates to in English is the fact that I'm referring to that actor in my level blueprint and it's my level blueprint's job to start this what I'm calling a floater and alternate its states in a loop you know start floater right this this whole thing is a loop going back and forth this is in my level blueprint this is purely for demo purposes obviously I wouldn't normally do this here but the point is that this um, reference goes bad when you load it using my plugin because my plugin deletes all current actors and then remakes them. For actors in a large dynamic world with AI and all sorts of things that you really do want to recreate, it's perfect. But if you have something in your level blueprint or you have actors that you really don't want to destroy but you still want to reload their save state, we have a problem. Like, what are we going to do? And, and I've made an addition to my plugin to solve this matter. Now, just to make sure you understand the setup, I have this little thing I'm calling a floater. It's like a magnetic pyramid thing. And it uses my Rama save component. And it has one variable that it's saving, which is over here, called cur state. Now, cur state is just a boolean, and when I change states between the red and the not red, I'm just flipping this boolean. Really simple example. Now, the core function, and all, all my, this is where I'm rotating it right here. That's simple enough, add actor world rotation. Um, the core function in my save system is what do you do when you're loading? Because when you're ready to load, I'm telling you all the data's been loaded for any variables that you've chosen to save. Now, what are you going to do with them to fully reload the state of the actor? Well, if the current state is on, I'm going to enter state 2, which means turn back to normal, otherwise I'm going to turn red. Right? That's the setup. So it's just one variable. Now, it should work in theory. Problem is it's being referenced in the level blueprint, so here's my solution for that. I now give you a, a GUID. Uh, it stands for Globally Unique Identifier, and you can use this very, very easily because Epic provided a lovely little setup where it's really easy to generate a new uh, Globally Unique Identifier. This Globally Unique Identifier looks at the CPU cycles of your computer, it checks your time zone, it checks so many factors to, to generate a truly unique ID that is um, going to be unique throughout the entire editor and even in a save file meaning you can make as you if you have a save file that has an ID for this thing it will be unique in every save file again because of counting your time counting the time of your computer checking CP cycles so many things it's guaranteed unique in time over time through many save files it's a very powerful feature now just by generating you see I have this see how it's like highlighted there you have to actually you have to break the focus and then it'll actually generate a weird little bug but easy to fix so I have now generated an ID just by generating an ID you can read this on your own in, in your version of the plugin or pause the video uh, just by doing that I have now told my system hey this thing has a unique ID don't destroy it and recreate it just reload its data so now I like going full screen so now I'm gonna save when it's red Okay, I'm saving. And now, one, two, three, let's, let's load when it's not red. Hey, look, it's red, but will it keep going? Ah, look, it does. So that means that the level blueprint is happy now, because I never destroy the actor now. Ready? Load! I actually am just ready. One, two, load! <laughs> want to have to do that again. Load! <laughs> so I'm never actually destroying the actor now, but I'm still reloading the save data, which is proved by the fact that it's instantly going back to its red state when I load. Um, so that is that feature. Other features, 
include, I've added a tagging system, so you can give any tags you want to actors. You can check if an actor has a tag, I call them save tags, you can add them during runtime, you can add them whenever you want, and they get saved um, automatically by me. So it doesn't matter when you add them, runtime, blueprint, anywhere you want. Now, you can get all the actors that have certain save tags if you want, uh, it's a convenient little feature, because it's in the space of anything that has a Rama save component, but the main feature is that you can choose to load from a file only the actors that have the tags that you specify. This is an array, so you can specify multiple. And if you do, then only actors that have any of those tags will be loaded. It's an all-inclusive system. If any matches are found, the actor's loaded. It's not like a union thing where everything has to match. Just if I see the tag, load it. That's all there is to it. Uh, so that's another new feature that lets you selectively load from a large file only things that are relevant to you at a particular time. Uh, let's see, now the other new feature is very useful in single player games or any game where you want to like really control how an actor gets loaded and that's right here should load actor world position now if you ch turn that off what will happen is that if you have for example a player character and you want to decide where they end up after a load event you can turn this off and then go to town do whatever you want you should do whatever you plan to do after the actor fully loaded event because I will have attempted to set the position of pretty much everything else in the world and then you can say well here's what I'm going to do with this particular actor so this event is the core event after this event do whatever you want to the actor move it wherever you want it to go so the tag system and the GU ID oh with the global unique identifier system you'll notice let's go find it I'm going to actually click on the actor here, the Rama save component here. So, this unique identifier, if you alt drag, if you have take this actor, I want you to try to memorize this, ready? Right? Look at it, or, you know, go back in the video. I'm going to alt drag, oops, <laughs> didn't do that right. Hey, wait, alt drag isn't working. Why is alt drag not working? I've never seen alt drag not work. Huh? Is this new in 4.13 where alt drag doesn't work or something like that? Let me try alt dragging this thing. That alt dragged? I've never seen this! It's not duplicating the actor when I alt drag. Oh, there we go. Whatever! You didn't see that. I didn't see it either, and the, it's not in the video. Shh. So, I've now alt dragged the actor, and I now have two. I don't know what happened, don't ask me. <laughs> I now have two, and they are in fact having the same supposedly unique identifier because it's an exact duplicate. When you alt drag, it's an exact duplicate. Now, that's not going to work with my system because they're no longer globally unique, so all you got to do is click and say generate a new one. And you could use a blue utility to do that automatically for you, or you could do it in your constructor. But remember, if you alt drag, which now works magically because it knows it's being watched, then what will happen is it'll still be an exact copy, so you have to manually generate. That's the only trick to the system. Other than that, really easy way to not have to destroy actors and still be able to save and load any information on them that you want. Those are the new features of the Rama save component. Don't forget all these tag systems added. It's really fun. And now you're going to see something fun. I have made this entire recording using my very own video capture tool which I'll be releasing at some point and I'm now going to end the recording by signaling to my system I want to end it in my actual game it's a lot more integrated than this but this entire video was made using my own C++ code including the audio and the recording. Enjoy!